So for a while now, I've been thinking about creating my own custom menu here in the hierarchy. I just think it would be really convenient when you right click, you could have your own selection of custom objects. And I'm gonna quickly show you a couple ways of how to do that and I'll have a script to help you out. At the bottom here, you'll see that I have a custom category where I can create one of two objects here. I have a sample prefab that'll be loaded from resources or another option where we will create a new object programmatically and add some components to it. Let's click the prefab to see what happens. And you'll see that it has indeed created a new object that is just called prefab. You see that it's blue and it has this little arrow here. So it is indeed a prefab and has the prefab connection. And if we wanna see where this prefab is actually coming from, it's coming from a resources folder right here. And it's pretty straightforward. The prefab is just named prefab. And this is pretty convenient if we wanted to use the same object, but also have the um, affordances that prefabs give us. But let's say we wanted a different approach where we just needed to create a simple object, maybe for debug purposes, or maybe we wanted something that it wasn't easy for designers in our project to make changes to it. I believe this is also how a lot of these other objects within this hierarchy context menu work. But if we come down to the custom option again and we just click sample, it's a pretty basic object where it's just a game object with a empty script that I've just called sample behavior on it. But you'll notice that there isn't another object in the resources menu. Like I said, this is something we're creating via code instead. So let's open up the scripts to see how I'm doing this. And you'll see here that I have this static class that I've just called create utility. And we have these two simple functions called create prefab and create object. For create prefab, you'll see that we're using the prefab utility and the instantiate prefab function, and then just giving it the game object that we're loading through the resources using a provided path. And I'm using instantiate prefab over just the normal instantiate because this maintains the prefab connection. If we just used instantiate, it would just be a pretty much just a regular object that we couldn't edit or anything like that within the prefab view. And then for create object, you'll notice that we're using this thing called object factory and we're calling create game object, where it just takes two arguments, the name of the game object and an array of parameters of type. So it'll just be all of the types for the components that you actually want to add to it. And we'll go over this as in a quick example in a second. Both of these functions then funnel into this place function where it just does a bunch of a tool mumbo jumbo to properly get the objects that we want out into the scene. It, some of this may not seem terribly necessary, but it's just some of that weird Unity tooling to make sure that everything happens as expected. But all we're really doing is finding a location for our game object, placing it within the scene, registering an undo in case we want to undo the object that we added, make sure we're selecting it, and then marking the scene as dirty for some of our edge cases to make sure that we can properly save our scene. What's nice about this object factory, once this object is created, it'll actually mark the scene as dirty for us so, it's, so it properly saves. But for whatever reason, that doesn't happen with instantiate prefab here. This is a lot of hand waviness, so I would advise to kind of look at some of these functions and things like that on your own time if you're interested to see more about how they work. But if you want to utilize this, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's go to this sample create utility where we first have this menu item. And the big thing that the big takeaway from this is that if we want our menu item to show up in that hierarchy menu, we want to make sure we start it off with game object. If we don't do that, it's going to show up as a menu item at the top toolbar. But all we're doing is calling that create object function within our create utility. We pass it a name and a type of sample behavior, which is just going to add that component. And I'll do another quick example of this really quick, but we'll come back to it. Let's just look at the prefab create utility really quick, where this is pretty straightforward, a similar menu item, and we'll just call the create prefab. And this is just going to be the path or the name of the object within our resources folder. Since we looked at it earlier, it's just named prefab. So I just wrote prefab here. But let's say we wanted to actually utilize this to, well, before we do that, I'll just say here, if you want to put your own prefabs in here, you can just copy this function and put whatever path you want to in there. And then it'll kind of make more sense once we do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this function. And let's say we wanted to create a simple object to create a game object with a audio source on it. So let's just update our menu item here to just say audio. And we'll just say, instead of create sample, we'll say create audio source. The name of the function isn't particularly important. It's not going to be displayed in the editor, but it's just good for, I don't know, just good practice, I guess. So we'll say sample object, we'll just call this audio object. And we can put more than one component in here, but for this, we don't need to. I'm just going to add an audio source. But before we do that, we need to make sure we have the Unity Engine namespace. So let's do that really quick. There we go. I'm going to add the audio source, make sure to save that. And now let's go back into Unity and see what shows up. 
So now that we're back in Unity, I will just delete both of these objects that we just created. We'll save that and we'll right click and see our new hierarchy menu. And you'll see that we now have this new entry called audio. And when we click on it, we'll have our audio object. We have our audio source that we wanted to add to it. And you'll also notice that we get the little star within our scene to actually show that, hey, something has actually changed and you want to save this. Um, let's also just hit Control Z to make sure our uh, undo works. But we can also see an edit to say undo create create object audio object just to see it actually gets registered there as well. But if we just hit Control Z, we'll notice that it disappears. And that's about it for this quick tool. Hopefully you find it useful and I'll see you all in the next one.